Hey, this is Ant bringing you a Unreal Engine tutorial. So in this video, I'll be showing you how you can use GitHub to store your Unreal Engine projects online. And in this example, we'll be using github.com. And it can also allow you to create backups of your project, so no more moving around in hard drives. And also it allows other team members to collaborate by sharing the, the repo link with them. So without further ado, I'll go into the tutorial now. To begin the tutorial, let's have a look at GitHub. So Git stands for Global Information Tracker and Hub. Well, what it says on the tin, it's a hub. It's designed basically for productivity and productivity and designed for collaboration. And that means that you can store repositories of uh, different code bases on there. So if you're creating a software development project, you can use this. And it's useful for sharing with other people without having to send them the files and it can be used in where there's teams working together on a project so that it'll enable them to work on different branches or it can enable them to just basically have somebody in control and a backup so even if they don't decide to collaborate it's a very useful way of storing projects i've done that before on some of my previous tutorials and i highly recommend you doing that um, it's a very good fake fail safe safe um, I don't know, you've got your computer at school and you, you save to the drive, but you want somewhere a bit more permanent and not easily to, you know, to get to lose, if that makes sense. Um, if you don't have an account with GitHub, I strongly recommend you hit sign in. Oh, sorry, sign up, I beg your pardon. Uh, do the registration. It will ask for a few details, including a two-step authentication. Um, but for myself, I'm not going to do that because I already have an account. So in the next part, I will show you the main screen after I've signed you with my login credentials. Now that I've logged in, this is my landing page. So on the left hand side, you'll see your user ID and here you'll also see some projects that I've worked on before. So you might uh, recognize a couple of them, Broken First Person Shooter, um, Events Tutorial. Um, but we'll just click on one to show you what it looks like. So if you click on this, it'll load the this particular project. And as you can see, it's got the Unreal Engine files in it along with a couple of things like a readme and a getignore file. Uh, we'll go into that at a later step. So you might be thinking, well, how do I create a repository on here? Well, you can create it by clicking a new button here and sort of setting one up on the clouds, but I'm going to show you a different way and that's using GitHub Desktop. To get GitHub Desktop, just go to a Google search and type in GitHub Desktop. Click on the top link, and as you can see here, it'll take you to the landing page. And for me, I'm using Windows 64 bit, so I'm going to click download. Give that a couple of seconds to download. And then I'm going to run the installer. So give that a couple of seconds. And it's auto associated with my account, but just so I can have a bit more transparency, go to options. This was the last thing. I'm going to sign in. Continue a browser. And I'm going to open GitHub Desktop EXE. And this will take me to the last, uh, last sort of project I was working on for the, uh, I think this was the AI project. So what I want to do is I'm going to go file. And I'm going to create a new repository. This one, I'm just going to call test repo, short for repository. I'm not going to initialize it with readme, but you can do that if you want. Now for Unreal Engine, I'm going to create a git ignore, scroll right to the bottom, and you'll see an option there for Unreal Engine. Uh, I'm not too fussed about the license, but what I am concerned about is the location for this. I don't want it going into another path. So for mine, I'm going to just choose storage. I've got a GitHub folder already. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new folder. I'm going to call that test repo, enter, and I'm going to select the folder. Create the repository. Now that's all ready to go. However, it needs to be published before we can do anything with it. So I'm going to, you can hit the button here. I'm just going to click this one instead. Now that'll take you to the publish uh, pop-up. 
It's got a name test repo. You can put a description, it's optional. Organization, I'm gonna keep that as none. However, it's this option that um, you need to be concerned about. So if you're working privately on your own projects, you don't want anyone to be able to see this code, keep that private. However, if you want to uh, have a collaboration with other people, and you want to make it public, so say if it's a tutorial, you uncheck that and it will allow you to share it. However, for now, I'm just going to publish the repository. Okay, so that's now uh, ready. There's no files in it yet, but if I go to GitHub and hit a refresh, you'll see a test repository. And as you can see, it's created an attributes file, dot .git attributes file, and a dot .git ignore. And that basically, what that does is it ignores certain types of files that get uploaded into source control. Because you can see here, it's not, uh, it's not accepting binaries and I believe it's not accepting the derived data cache or the intermediate and save folder. So it basically creates rules for different file types and stops them from being uploaded when you do the sync. I'll, uh, I'll demo that in a minute. But uh, if I navigate to the, the folder where I've created this, so if I've got storage, GitHub, test repo, you'll see here, the get attributes and the get ignore file that's created on the cloud. We'll just close that down for now. We don't need it. So the next part, I'm going to show you how to put an Unreal project into this uh, folder and then uh, how to publish it into the, into the GitHub repository on the cloud. You might, at this point you might be thinking, great, how do I get my Unreal files into the, the Elmire thing? And really, it's it's an easy process once you know how, and once you've done it a few times, you'll you'll become second nature to you. But I'm going to demonstrate that now by creating the project. So if we go into Unreal Engine, um, let's see, let's choose an engine version. So let's use Unreal Engine Five. So Unreal Engine Five initializes. We'll run through the process, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a blank project. I'm going to choose games, I'm going to choose blank. I'm going to keep start content off now so that it reduces the size. And I'm happy with the storage location. I'm just going to go call this test project one. I'm going to hit create. So let that create it. It will open with a very bare bones project. And as you can see, you've got the default uh, open scene layout. So what I want to do is I'm going to save all. And for a little uh, cheat, I'm just going to go to right click the content folder, click show and explorer, go back up one level, and then I'm going to close the test project. So you might be thinking, well, great. Might we, I'll just copy and paste that whole test project folder. Well, there's a little caveat here, and I want you to just take that into account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to control, uh, select all these, or control A, control X. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste these into this folder instead. Great. So we have some files. They're inside of there next to the get attributes and the get ignore, but well, what effects that had on this thing? Well, if you open up GitHub Desktop, you'll notice that these files are here now. You've got default editor, engine, default game, HoloLens for some reason, and you've got the U project files. So I need to get these files into the repo. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call this the initial push. Not really fussed about the description, but I'm going to commit. Okay, so those files are basically ready to be com committed. So the next thing I need to do is I need to click, uh, click push origin. Okay, so that's great. It's done it. Let's go have a look in our repo. Oh, 
as you can see here, we have a content file with a config. And there's a few here, any files. But remember, we've got an empty project, so there's not much going in here. So let's go back up to the root. These are all empty files. So what are you thinking? Oh, that's great. So it's pushed up some of the files. Well, what use is that? Well, I'll tell you what, let's go into some of these projects. Let's have a look, shall we? Let's go into, where's the test project folder? Let's open the project up. So it's going to run through the motions. Open the project back up. Great. So we've got a level. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Well, what do we do with this? Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder. I call this blueprints. I'm going to open the folder. What I want to do is I want to create a blueprint actor, just for example. I'm going to call that test actor. And okay. So save all. Let's do something else then. Let's create a new folder. Let's call that maps. Double click that. I'm going to open a new level and say if I want a basic level, create. Obviously, there's nothing in it. It's the default starting assets with the skylights and sky sphere, sky atmosphere, and all those usual things you get. But let's save the current level. Let's double click in maps and let's call this test map. Save. So here we've got the an actor. We've got a test map. Let's control shift and S to save. Or if you need to, just go to save all here and close the project down. Open up GitHub Desktop. And as you can see, GitHub Desktop now has these two uh, assets and the test actor we created, and it's got the test map. So let's just call that commit actor and map. Commit to main, push origin, give it a couple of seconds to process. Click on the main branch. Oh, test repo to get to the root, I beg your pardon. And as you can see, we now have a config and content folder. So the, the files that I added are now synced up to the cloud. Before I bring this video to an end, I'd like to show you a feature of the, that uh, you can use when op operating GitHub. And that's the ability to collaborate with other team members. So you might be thinking, great aunt, how do I do that? You know, well, I could you could download them. You could obviously, there's a few options here, but the easiest way is just to invite them. So click on settings and you'll get all of the different uh, sub menus here, but the one you're interested in is collaborators. Click on collaborators, add people. And what you can do is you can search by their GitHub username, their full name or their email, and you can send them an invite to collaborate on with this particular repository. Obviously, I'm not going to give any examples, but what will end up happening is the person on the other side will end up uh, accepting the invite. Obviously, they'll have visibility on this. But what they can do is install GitHub Desktop, go to File, Clone a Repository, and then what they need to do is they need to search for the repo, click the one that they want. Obviously, it will error out because of this one has already contains folders, but what you'll need to do is they need to uh, create by going to Choose, uh, picking a empty folder somewhere, so I don't know, New folder, test repo to select that, hit clone. Obviously, there's not much files. However, if I navigate to my computer and go to the GitHub test repo to, you'll see that it's just downloading and created a copy of the, the files. Now to make any changes, 
it's literally the same process. So hang on, let's say, okay, we'll open up test repos too inside of this folder instead. Give it a few seconds to load. Go to maps, go to the test map. And I don't know, let's say, let's say the person you are collaborating with, they're a junior programmer and they've gone to print string, hello, event begin play, they've compiled the code, they've saved it, control shift S, they've closed it down, gone to GitHub desktop, okay. It's auto populated with that. Let's commit it to main and see what happens. Push to origin. Okay, let's go back to the, the repo. Let's go to the file that we updated. And as you can see, that uh, push that was just committed is now updated and it comes up with the actual uh, name update test actor asset. So like I say, obviously you'll need to sort out in your teams who updates what. Now, a little pro tip, uh, if you're working with other people and you want to save a little bit of confusion, what I would strongly advise you to do is say if you've got like artists working from different disciplines, I would create them a, their own folder inside of Unreal Engine that they can work in. So their own asset folder. So you've got content folder here, right click, new folder. You've got a 3D artist named Bob. Next folder, you've got a technical artist called Dave. And in the last part, you've got a, uh, I don't know. You've got a, I don't know, an animator called Rob. What that allows them to do is, as soon as they create some assets, so they create a new animation, I don't know, for the sake of that. Let's see, animation sequence, obviously. Oh, an animation blueprint. Yeah, that's fine. It's not going to let me do it. And let's see. Oh, level sequence. My cinematic. Draw shift in S. Now, essentially, they'll only be manipulating assets inside of their folder. So it's one way of doing it and it's optional, but um, I'd strongly, if you're working with any artist, just I would strongly get them to work in their own folders. Makes it a lot easier. Okay guys, so that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you find this video tutorials useful. And if you have any questions about GitHub desktop or GitHub or source control, uh, please feel free to comment, put uh, a comment on, and I'll try and answer it as best as I can. So take care, guys. Thank you for watching.